Okay, may the demo gods be with me. Um, let's start. I, I must say, wow, it's a big turnout. Um, my name's Frank. Uh, some of you may know me as, uh, as Secubus on Twitter and some of the other stuff I do. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, Secubus. And to show you what it's all about, I, I want to tell this story about two guys. Um, this guy called C. Lulis, or any other name you choose to give him, and B. Wrightlet. So um, they've both given, been given a task to perform a weekly vulnerability scan of all their public IP addresses of their company. And C. Lulis decided to just use a regular vulnerability scanner which means that he has to get up um, at a rather awkward time. I think this is the time I went to bed yesterday and was a bit shaky, as you can see. Um, he has to manually start his scan and then just wait for it to finish. Um, then when the scan is finished, he actually has to yeah, recuperate a little bit, analyze the report in the morning, and yeah, that's not good for you. It's, it's, it's like doing DEF CON parties. Um, be right, let decides to use Secubus. So he, he spends his morning setting it up. Um, then he actually goes home. <laughs> he relaxes a bit, and the scanning happens at night. So I'm just going to let the scanning happen. And when he wakes up in the morning, he can just actually look at his findings and remediate. So what is the problem we're trying to solve here? If you do vulnerability scans with Nessus, and can I see a raise of hand who here does vulnerability scanning with Nessus? Wow. Um, who actually scans the same infrastructure more than once? Yeah, and it doesn't seem to be designed to do that actually. Um, so it's, it's a good vulnerability scanner. I don't think it's too expensive. If you don't use it commercially, it's actually free. Um, but it generates quite a bit big report that you have to go through every time. And scanning is not very quick, it takes time, it's not automated, and you spend about four times as much time analyzing your stuff than you actually do scanning. And then you get the results in the GUI and, well, it's not very good, the GUI. Um, so I think the work risk ratio if you want to do regular scanning is off. Um, Secubus is a wrapper around Nessus OpenVAS um, and it has a web GUI that's geared towards ticking off the findings. So it's actually designed to say, okay, let's go through these findings, which ones have I done, which ones haven't I got done, and it compares consecutive scans. Currently it supports the following scanners, Nessus OpenVAS, Nikto, and there's more to follow. And what do we do differently? Well, first of all, we start the scans from the command line, which means you can hook them up to cron tab, which means you can stay in bed to do your scanning. Um, we store the findings in a database. Currently, I regard the file system as being a database, and that will change in the future. And we present stuff through the web GUI. So what just happened when I clicked dem uh, do scan demo, it actually started the Nessus client, which went out to a Nessus daemon, which is running on this PC. Um, it's scanning one of my targets. This is one of my oh. target. And let me pull up the other target. So oh. that might be an interesting scan. And let me see if it's, it's still running. Everything runs on VMware on my laptop. Um, so every now and then we'll probably have to, um, I have to speak slower and make the timing work better. Um, it is actually scanning. Yeah. Yeah, it's still scanning. Okay, so what happened when I clicked the do, uh, the do scan command, uh, there's a configuration file that was parsed, which tells me where does the scanner live, uh, what password and username to use, I'm not going to put that on the screen, um, where do my binaries live, etc. and then the client is started. So, and hey, we finished. So now, it's demo time. This is actually the Secubus GUI, and there's a couple of scans here. Um, I just did the demo scan, like I said, with the do scan demo. And 
And there's a couple of things that we can see here. We see that the scan just ran at, uh, at this date at an interesting time because my time zones are different. Um, and you can actually get the, uh, the Nessus HTML report. If it still supported XML, you could get the XML report, but it doesn't anymore. And the NB output, which is actually uh, rather interesting to us. And then if I click on changes, I got the same output as I just got on the command line. So, but that's not the, in the interesting thing. The interesting thing is here with the statuses. So I click on new. Let me see if I can take that a little bit. Is that still readable? Barely. Um, so you can filter. There's filter capabilities in here. So I can look at all the, all the findings from the XP host and see that it's actually a really old XP installation. So I want, clearly don't want this in my network. So I change the status here. I say it's an open risk. Put a little comment in. Select all the findings and do a bulk update. And this actually sets the status of all the findings that I just selected to, to open, meaning there's a risk. Now I've got another host, which is a web server. And that web server has a couple of ports, so you can also filter on port. Uh, it's got port 21 open with anonymous FTP. Now for the sake of the demo, I'm going to assume that that's actually a, um, a policy violation. So. Um, So no anonymous FTP allowed. Bulk update that. Go to the SSH port and I know that's okay because I've run this demo before. And then when I go to port 80, there's one finding that's actually of interest of me. So I'm going to click that open. Um, it's a trace enable off that's not set in the configuration. So I'll mark this as open. Let me refresh that. And all the other findings is no issue. And then there's a couple of others which are uh, of no interest. So that's a quick rundown of the findings. Uh, let me set out to actually fix them as well. So. Stopping the FTP daemon. And yeah, let's fix this one as well. Guess that's the best fix for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the interest of time, I'll wait for this to die and then start a new scan. Okay, so. Let's go to week two. Um, we've got Mr. C. Lulas again, again doing a scan at 4 a.m., um, not liking it very much. So he has to wait for it, sleeping in the office again, and sleeping the rest of the day as well because he's just too naked to do it. And, and you could wonder if you look at the results and you do the printout of the two Nessus reports if it's really worth it because you've got this big report that you got to read and it'll be subtly different from from the um, report of last week. I mean, who can spot the five differences here? You can? Let's see if you got them right. Yeah. So be right, Lat. He's decided to do it a little bit differently um, since, well, he already got his scan, uh, scan configured. He can actually go home straight away. Uh, relax there a little bit. Uh, wait for the scan to happen at night and wake up in the morning and happily analyze his, uh, his, his work again. So what's the trick? How do I compare the two scans? 
I just showed you the, the um, quickly showed you the uh, NBE output, an SS backend file. And it's actually a very simple file format um, and, and a little bit broken here and there. Um, there's a type field, so it will be a result or it will be uh, a timing or it will be an info. And timing and info are just ignored. We're really only interested in the results. Then there's a network, and it seems that Tenable thinks that everything that's between dots, the first three things that are between dots, is actually a network, which is very interesting if you're scanning some www.something.co.uk, because I think the network is www.something.co. Um, it gets the IP address, and then the plugin ID, port, um, priority, and uh, the output of the plugin. If the port scanner finds something, it's actually not going to, uh, to bother with the uh, last three fields and cut it off. So I take that output, um, take, the, uh, take it and put it into a, a tree into memory and store that on the disk as well. Um, and that tree structure you can really easily use to compare your previous scan with your current scan. And then it's all about the statuses I just showed you. So new means it wasn't in the previous scan, it is in the current scan. Changed means it was in the previous scan, it's in the current scan as well, but it changed a little bit. Now we're being a little bit more intelligent than that because uh, output that has got timestamps in it, we actually ignore that the timestamp change because that's expected behavior. And gone means it was in the previous scan, it's not there. And then as a user, you assign your statuses. So in the previous example, um, we assigned just assigned open and no issue, meaning it's a risk, it's not a risk. We can assign fix, meaning it's gone, I'm happy it's gone. And we can assign hard mast, and hard mast means don't bother me with this finding ever again. Um, and by default, there's two findings in Nessus, um, the trace route and the uh, Nessus configuration uh, information that I by default put in hard mast uh, category because it's, uh, yeah, just fluff. So, then the, the machine assigned statuses, um, you get hard mod, well, no, just skip that slide. The whole idea behind it is, well, if it is okay, if it was okay in the past, it didn't change, why would you bother a human with it? The cycle that it fits in is a cycle of scanning your infrastructure, comparing it automatically, then you get the system assigned statuses of new, changed, and gone, and then as a human you go and assess it and assign the issue, no issue statuses. And then you go and fix your findings and scan again. So let's see if we've got a result already. Yeah, it's done. Cool. So. I click on the demo again and you'll see that the counters are different. There's only three new findings this time. There's four findings that have changed and there's 30 findings that have gone. So if I click on the gone findings and I look by host, surprisingly enough, there's 24 findings of the XP host gone because it gone off, got offline. So glad it's gone, market is fixed and we're done here. The web server, um, well, we shut down the FTP daemon, so all the findings related to that are gone. Happy with that. And there's the one finding that we wanted to kill, which is also gone. So that's good. Then let's clear the filters. There's four findings that have changed. Um, one of them is the direct, is to have banner detection on the web server. And we can see here that it's now disclosing its entire uh, pedigree. It's, it's telling you who it is, what modules it's got installed, exact version numbers, the whole, uh, yeah, the whole lot. And the little section here is actually the diff of the two findings. So what, yeah, what are the actual changes? So while fixing one finding, they actually introduce another one. So this needs to be fixed. Let me just refresh that list. Um, then this is actually all the same issue. It's all about the banners and that's a pattern that you see quite often is that there's one little thing wrong with your infrastructure and you see it back in three or four findings. So let's just all mark this as open.
Moving along to the new findings, um, well, it now knows that it's got WebDAV running, so it marks that as a finding.